Hello, my name is Ken Harrison. I'm the president and CEO here at GMB Corporation. Have you ever tried to explain what you do to some of your colleagues when you say, I work in the vacuum industry? What does that mean? Usually they think about vacuum sweepers or vacuum cleaners or something of that nature. We even get calls sometimes from people who want parts for their Hoover. But the industry that we're in is very different from that. I wanna do a little bit of a demonstration today and talk about what is the vacuum industry, what is the scientific and industrial vacuum industry, and what does that mean to us? Vacuum sweepers are just air movement devices. They really don't pull a very strong vacuum. You can actually pull a stronger vacuum with a straw drinking your soda. So this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about airless environments. We're talking about what you see in outer space. It also includes uh, controlled air environments or controlled gas environments. So it might be an argon environment, it could be a nitrogen environment, but you're controlling the atmosphere. And that's very different than just a vacuum sweeper. It is a vacuum chamber, it is vacuum gate valves, it's the vacuum hardware equipment that's associated with that. And it's really controlling the atmosphere. On Earth, we're surrounded by air and we don't even realize it. In one cubic inch of air, there are 492 quintillion air molecules. That's a lot of air packed into one little cubic inch. What we translate that to and what we commonly think about is barometric pressure, 29 or 30 inches of mercury. Uh, in the vacuum industry, we also talk about pounds per square inch, and that's about 14.7 pounds per square inch due to the atmospheric pressure that we're under. Another thing we talk about is mean free path. That means how far can an air molecule move before it bumps into another air molecule? What is the distance on average between two air molecules? In atmosphere, the distance between two air molecules is three times 10 to the minus six inches. In other words, they're very tightly packed. You can barely even move and you're bumping against another air molecule. Now let's compare that with vacuum. Even at a rough vacuum level, which is one times 10 to the minus three tor, which is what we consider a rough vacuum, that changes a lot. On average then, an air molecule can move two inches before it actually hits another air molecule. There's still a lot of air in the rough vacuum. There's still a lot of air molecules. In fact, there are 656 trillion air molecules in rough vacuum per square inch. So that's still a lot of molecules, but the distance between those tiny little molecules has increased greatly. Well, it's true. You are under a lot of pressure. In fact, the average man has a surface area of 2,900 square inches. With that amount of surface area over your body, you are under over 21 tons of pressure from atmosphere. On average, a woman is slightly smaller than a man, so they have a surface area of about 2,480 square inches, and they are under less pressure only about 18.6 tons of pressure from atmosphere on average on their bodies from the atmospheric pressure. So how does all of this pressure, how does this vacuum atmosphere situation relate to GNB and the products that we make? Well, we have to deal with that pressure. And it doesn't seem like a lot of pressure. We're used to seeing air compressors at 100 PSI and other pieces of equipment that are very high in pressure. So 14.7 PSI doesn't sound like a lot, but let me give you an example that illustrates how much pressure that really is. So here I have a steel bar. It is one inch square, so that's per square inch. And for 14.7 pounds, this steel bar must be 52 inches long. So this represents the atmospheric pressure that we're under. So if you can imagine, if you can do an equivalency, the atmospheric pressure that's forcing down on us is about the same as 52 inches of steel being applied to every surface. So GNB specializes in making vacuum equipment. This is equipment that creates the airless environments that are needed. 
And you say, needed for what? I didn't know we needed vacuum for anything that we make, but vacuum is used in a lot of different places. It is used in industry. A lot of the metallurgical products like titanium are made in vacuum. Heat treatment for products is often done in a vacuum chamber. So there are a lot of basic industrial products that require vacuum in order to be made. There are a lot of consumer products that require vacuum. Microchips and semiconductors require a vacuum. Flat panel displays require a vacuum. Your cell phone, the display, the microprocessor, even some of the battery components are often made in vacuum. So vacuum products are required throughout industry, throughout consumer goods, and in most cases, we don't even know the process that was used in order to make the products that we commonly use. We also use vacuum in the scientific industry. That means we use vacuum for space simulation, we use vacuum in doing scientific tests, we use vacuum for doing cancer treatments, we use vacuum for synchrotrons and cyclotrons and linear accelerators, for laser experiments, for fusion experiments, so there are many, many highly scientific places where vacuum is used. Even as I stand here and look around the room, I can see many places that vacuum was used in the manufacturing process. We have light bulbs that are made using a vacuum. We have windows outside that are low emissivity windows. Those have a coating that are put on using vacuum. We have semiconductors and our cell phones and our computers and our cameras. Those are created in a vacuum environment. So just all of the items around you, if you look around the room, there are many things that are created in a vacuum environment. This is an overview of scientific and industrial vacuum and what it means to us. So at GNB, we are experts in vacuum. If you think that vacuum is nothing, it's a space filled with nothing, then at GNB, we are experts in nothing. For all of your vacuum equipment needs, please contact GNB. You can see the phone number and website there on your screen.